So in the first video, I showed you just how to bring some video in, how to monitor it in the workspace, how to throw a, a, at least a size and position effect on it. So we're going to now move on to how do we create some transitions and how do we do some editing of this video. Um, first of all, if you don't want to hear yourself talking, if you don't want to hear the stuff that's going on, you can mute any of these. We can mute this track and now we don't have to listen to my talking there. But you can, or, or you can leave it on. I'm going to leave it off for a minute. And the only thing you're going to hear is me, the gentle rain outside, and my pug snoring as she's sitting right beside me on the couch. So let's say we want these videos to segue between each other some better way than just a jump cut. This is, this is what we call jump cuts or just a direct hard uh, cut. And you see this most of the time. We're going to click the preview in and watch it play. This is, I don't know if I even mentioned that in the last, last video, this is where you, you preview what you're watching. And right now, uh, we've got this, I've got this in full mode. Now, there are going to be times when you're going to want to not have this in full mode. Maybe you're working with 4K video and it's super hard for your computer to render it out. You can go here and you can select different preview. You can go to uh, one-fourth. Now what it's going to do, we'll, hit, we'll, hit, we'll talk about this thing too, this is the settings. You actually have a couple settings for how you preview this for the amount of data that comes in. Um, you've got your playback resolution, which right now I just set it to one-fourth. That means when I hit play, it's going to play one-fourth quality. That saves processing power on the computer and keeps it from being so hard on your computer and it's not herky-jerky while you're editing it. Then you've got your paused resolution. I almost always keep that at full. Because I want, when I stopped doing the video, I want to see really what it looks like. But you can degrade the video. Now, it doesn't really degrade it like when you're doing your, your playback. This, all it does is it previews it at one-fourth quality or one-half quality. Sometimes it knows it's got 4K video and it's very hard to work with. And it'll go to one-eighth. You can even go to one-sixteenth. It knows that for 1080p, my computer can handle this. It can actually handle full I'm using a pretty pretty stout iMac right now. But that anyway, that's just so you know where that is. This is where you've got your playback and your paused resolution. So you can change these things if you're experiencing kind of jerky video. I'm going to go back to full for now. So the transition. Over here is where these, the transitions kind of hide here in this little video transition. And if you open these up, you'll start seeing all kinds of different transitions you can choose from. You flip any of these down. And the best way I can tell you to, to learn these is just to open them up and start experimenting with them, see how they work. I'm going to show you just one, just one of my favorite ones is Cross Dissolve. I'm going to type in C-R-O, and, and I just do it in this little hole over here, and it pulls up really the ones that, that it knows are Cross Dissolves. It actually pulls up Cross Dissolve down here. And you see this blue around it? That means that is my default. That is my default transition right now. It's, it's most people's favorite transition is that anyway. But it pulls up stuff, stuff like constant power and constant gain because those are cross dissolves for audio. You see it comes up under audio transitions. But it tries to pull in the things that it thinks you might want to do or things that are cross dissolve or cross dissolve related. So some, a lot of times people use cross zoom, or they'll use this uh, Irish cross. It has the word cross in it. We go, we're going to pull cross dissolve over here. And I'm going to put it between uh, these two pieces of video. You see what I did? I got it and I dragged it, and I drag it right over that. Now, I, if I drag it to here, it's it's going to work differently than if I, I like to drag it right square in the middle, and it uses half the frames from this clip and half the frames from this clip to create the cross dissolve. It's a real Real slowly, I'm going, to just, I'm going to hit my little right arrow here, and we're going to one frame at a time. Let's watch what happens. You see that one starting to fade out, and the other one's starting to fade in, right? I'm going to just go frame at a time. So you can see these things that are framed at a time. Now, let, let's, let's watch it in real time, and let's see how that looks. Okay. Boy, my pug is snoring loud. Forgive us there, folks, for that pug snore. And that is, that is the real time. Let's say... You want that to take a little bit longer to happen. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. And sometimes you got to zoom in a little bit to get the full control of this function here. So I'm going to like just hover over either this side or this side. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to left click. Pug, stop snoring. There we go. And I'm going to drag this this way or that way. And you can see here it's showing me the duration. Now I've got one second and ten frames. 
or I can pull it down a little bit, whatever I want. And now we have a slower crossfade. Let's watch it now. Okay, now, since I may not explain how am I making this happen, I'm not always click and play here. You can just hit your space bar. So a lot of times if you see me start playing, I just drag this here and I start playing. I'm hitting the space bar. It works either Mac or PC. And there we've got the uh, dissolve. Now, you don't have to always use dissolves. You can use all kinds of funky things. Um, I, sometimes I do use the cube spin. Well, I use a lot of different ones. But let me just go ahead and do, I'm going to type in cube here, C-U-B-E. So not all of these are, uh, are, you know, like little fades and stuff like that. You can actually have something that's a little more radical. So I'm going to segue through that and see what we're doing here. You see we're going from one bit of video to the other with a cube spin. So let's try that again. I'll show you what it looks like. And there you go. And so I might reposition this video here. I know that I like it there where it's hanging. Let's go to 150. Pull it back over here. That's the video we, we, we sized up. That's some 720p video. I don't have it exactly properly set. Probably 950 by 530, I'd say. Uh oh, it's not it, is it? 540. So, folks, once again, we talked about these the last time. You can set real values in there. You can just click and type in numbers. And, and once you start realizing how video scales, you might start wanting to do that rather than just drag these things left and right. So, there we go. We've, we've put some transitions in here on these two. Uh, so let's talk about our default transitions. Let's turn our audio back on for a second. I'm going to delete this cross dissolve. And I'm going to delete this cube spin too. So now we're back to no transitions. And we have our audio playing. In there. Some pylons there. So let's say I want this audio to fade as well as the video. Now I can, there's a couple ways I can do it. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to type in C O N S. We talked about constant gain, constant power a while ago. Constant power is the one most people use. Constant gain is a little different. We'll talk about that in the future when we get more into audio. But if I want the audio to fade together, I can drag that in there and let's just listen to how the audio does. It should fade the audio one to the other, not be a hard uh, switch. So to, to make it a little more apparent, we're going to do this. Make spread it out. And let's listen to what happens. I can easily put my controller in there. The old pylons there for the. Uh... So you heard my audio fade one or the other. It's more effective when you do that with music. You can fade one piece of music into another. And so we'll pull some royalty free music in here in a future video, a future video that I'm going to do, future tutorial video. But you can do this with, with audio. The reason I show you that is I want to show you how you can do your just default transitions. Now as I told you earlier, I have my default transition set for the audio to be constant power and for my video to be a cross dissolve. So you can change what those defaults are, but we'll talk about that just in a second too. I'm going to right, or I'm not going to right click. Yeah, I'm going to right click. I'm going to come here. I'm going to right click there. I'm going to say apply default transitions. Boom. So there I've done that. I can go over here and do it again manually. I can say apply default transitions. And now I have a cross dissolve that's been pulled in and it's also cross fading the audio. All right. Let me delete, let me undo all. I'm going to do Command Z. Command Z or Control Z will undo that. I Command Z again will undo that. So now, let's say I must, I say I might have 50 clips here and I want to do that to all of them. Now, I don't only have three clips here. We can put another one in here if we want to. Let's go back to uh, Lake Road Hiss for YouTube. Let's go over here. And there's the, here, let's show the dam here. This is Lake Road Hiss dam. I'm going to put it in here. Play a little of it. Um, that's the list of Lake Road Hiss Dam. So it's 1925. Duke Energy made it all. So there we go. I'm going to put my out. I'm going to drag it down the timeline. Now I have four clips. And let's say I want to apply the default transitions to all these. I can do a Command A to select all. Command A or Control A. Or I can select it all by dragging across it. doesn't matter either way. And then once I have them selected, I can go up here under Sequence. And I can do Apply default transitions to selection and boom look what it does there it puts them all in and the other thing it does whether you want to or not and it's not a bad thing it puts them at the beginning so if there's not another piece of video here it just fades to black so you might have your video looking like this it starts in black and it comes in 
And then at the end, most people do, it's kind of a popular thing to fade out, fade your audio and video out at the end. The end. You know, you're used to seeing it in movies. If, however, you don't want any of these things, you can leave the ones that are in there. You can just click on the ones you want to get rid of. I usually click out of here to deselect everything that's anywhere outside of that. Then I can click on, if I decide I don't want it to fade out at the end, I can click on that. And I don't want that to click in, to fade out, I can click on that. You do the same thing likewise over here. If you decide you don't want one, you can click on it and delete it. Anything you want to do. And folks, there are many, many video transitions in here. Some cool looking stuff. Some stuff I think is gaudy. I think it's too much. Uh, but you can go in there and play around and uh, figure out which transitions you like. But that's how you do transitions in Premiere Pro. We're going to move on next and start talking about bringing some music into your video. Editing a little bit of audio in our next lesson.